You're very welcome back. Now from bards reciting heroic tales to Oscar Wilde and Sally Rooney, we are a nation of storytellers. We certainly are. And as this is Irish Book Week, we asked Derek to find out why it's so important to support Irish authors and illustrators. And of course, independent bookshops. He's at one of the most famous in the country. Derek, how are you getting on? Oh, one of the most famous indeed. Where we've landed down here at Chapters Books, you're on the heart of Parnell Street in Dublin City Centre this morning. Uh, we're joined now by Felicity Hayes. McC Your name is on the book, Felicity. My name is on the book. <laughs> <laughs> a published author, of course. We're celebrating Irish Book Week all this week. Tell us about it. Oh, gosh. Well, it's an opportunity really to celebrate books, book selling, publishers, illustrators. To, the kind of, it's a thing that's there all the time in our lives bookshops, books people who enjoy reading just kind of take it for granted. I mean, as Tommy mentioned there, we are a nation of storytellers, aren't we? Absolutely. I mean, you can't go into a pub, you can't go into a cafe, you can't go into a school, but people are sitting around chatting, telling stories. Uh, how important is it to celebrate Irish authors and Irish books? I think it's really important just to concentrate for a week on what we've got, because Ireland is extraordinary. I mean, I spend a lot of my time abroad and I come back to Ireland and I see the wealth of books and bookshops and how bookshops are at the very centre of Irish communities and librarians are there talking to booksellers, booksellers are talking to readers. Something to celebrate. I mean, we've all the kids behind us from Mount Carmel just up the road. That's where we start them at that young age. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, these are readers. These are people who will chat about books to each other and they don't have a shove down their neck. I mean, I'm 70 and I can remember a time when librarians were sort of behind a, a, a table and you were a bit scared of them. Kids nowadays have a chance to be empowered amongst books and I think that's fabulous. Now, obviously you're a published author. This is number 13 for you. Yes, yes. This, this <laughs> Congratulations, book. by the way. Thank you very much indeed. And this one is actually, I was really delighted to be asked to be an ambassador for Irish Book Week because this is a book set in a bookshop. Yeah, and where did the inspiration come from then? <laughs> well, I did one of my books in the past. I did a big book signing tour. I did 80, 80 Irish bookshops in 18 counties. And I just came away with this sense of the stories that booksellers have and what dynamic, exciting people they are. So that was great. I started off, OK, create two characters, a mother and a daughter, middle-aged daughter kind of had this dream of opening a bookshop at some stage and they say oh and they throw caution to the winds sell up everything open a bookshop on the west coast of Ireland and discover the reality of the dream yeah I, I mean where are we now in terms of books obviously with the with online and you know all that that's out there at the moment are, are we still selling books oh absolutely no question when I go into bookshops I get sort of two different messages from readers and from booksellers one is that live bookshops are the hubs of their communities. People love coming in. People like Mick Finucane, who owns Chapters, they'll put on events. They'll say, come on in and sit down and just, you know, be part of the place as well as buying books. And, and people, instead of the kid, people love the hard copy, right? People love hard copies. Yeah. And you and I were talking earlier, the smell of books. Yeah. The, the feel, feel of books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's this sort of sense that people might read them online. There's reasons why they might want to, you know, buy online and read on their Kindles. But there's something beautiful about actually having and holding a book. And one of your own is even better. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Felicity, thank you so much for joining us. All right, we're popping over to Una Woods. Good morning to you, Una. Una, we met you earlier on at the top of the air. How did you get involved as an illustrator? How did you become one? Um, well, I was always drawing and um, a few years ago, O'Brien Press had a perfect picture event for Culture Night and I took part in it and that's how I got my first book, the Have You Seen the Dublin Vampire published. I mean, what is the process involved um, becoming, uh, illustrating a book? Um, well, it's quite a lot of work. It could take between a year to two years to illustrate a book. If I'm illustrating a book that I've written, I always kind of have to visualise it first and draw some of the pictures. Whereas sometimes I've given a text I'll have to illustrate, so that's a totally different process. I have to imagine what type of characters the person who wrote the book would. Yeah, and you were telling me you don't really liaise with the author, no, so it's your you own don't. creative process yes, from start so, to finish. So you can kind of be a tiny bit worried. You worry, will, will they like what yeah. you've created? But it's really good fun. And of course, you're just down the road in Clontarf, the home of Brand Stoker, yes. and that inspired uh, this book. Yes, I kind of got a lot of ideas for my books when I'm out for walks. And one day I was walking past the park in Marino, the Marino Crescent, and I was looking in. And I saw the big tree in the middle of the park and I could see where Bram Stoker lived when he was a little boy. And then that's how I kind of thought it'd be really nice to write a story Absolutely. about. Absolutely, Una. Thank you for joining Good. us here this morning. Now, we're going to pop over here to Tori. Good morning to you, Tori. Good morning. Uh, tell us what's your favourite Irish book. My favourite Irish book is Scythe by Joanna Keane O'Flynn. There we go. And in fact, <laughs> you're studying that in school at the moment. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed it so much because like, she's like my age and it's set back in a way like 
years ago day and like seeing her daily life is just so interesting and you feel you can relate to it yeah i actually can because like kind of because <laughs> she has like obviously different problems but she's a teenage girl so and I you like the book yeah i love it yeah. so much what about you lola what are you reading at the moment i'm reading skullduggery pleasant by derek landy okay tell us about the story itself the book um skullduggery pleasant is a paranormal detective um book and it is about skullduggery pleasant and Val- valerie crane um uncovering mysteries and saving Ireland. So it's a, it's a good read, especially this time of year, right? Yeah, very spooky. Yeah, perfect <laughs> for Halloween. And what about you, Kira? I'm reading The Weight of Water by Sarah Crossan. Okay, what's it about? It's about just like a normal teenage girl who has like, she's trying to find her father, trying to make friends. And um, she loves swimming. She does, <laughs> like myself. And what is it about uh, books that you love, Kira? Um, the way they're written, it depends on like the way they're written, if they're written like a poetic form or just a normal kind of book form. But, yeah. Do you get lost in the book? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do get lost in a book that I really like and then I can't hear what people are saying to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, Takira, Lola and Tori. Now, Mick, you're the man responsible for uh, Chapters Bookstore because uh, you own the shop itself. I do, yeah. I have myself and my business partner, Kevin Neary. Uh, we reopened Chapters uh, just over two and a half years ago. It closed after just over 40 years. Yeah, Friday. and I mean, this is an iconic bookstore in the heart of Parnell Street. You obviously went to the wall and you brought it back to life. Yeah, yeah, we're working hard at it where we we get better each week or we at least we try to get better each week and uh, you know we believe that chapters is really important it's a, a we feel it's an iconic bookstore and it's really important to the people of, of, of Dublin. And it really is a reader's paradise. How many books are you talking in here? We have over 300,000 books. Wow, yeah, it's incredible, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's great. You know, ch- places like Chapters are fantastic. You, you can find a book that you never knew you were looking for. Oh, where can we find out more online? Uh, ChaptersBookstore.com. And we're celebrating Irish Book Week. There's a section on the website. We certainly are. And uh, we're so lucky to have so many great Irish authors. All right, from Mick, Una and Felicity here. What's your favourite book, by the way? Oh, my goodness me. Um, 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 whatever <laughs> one I've recently written. <laughs> <laughs> she would have to say that, wouldn't she? All right, lads. Uh, more later on. Back to you guys in studio. Thank you for listening. That's lovely. I love your book. I want to that read is this so book, fantastic. Is fantastic. And thank you for highlighting that. Not only Irish authors and illustrators, but also supporting your independent bookshops around the country Very for this kind. book week. They do so, so much. So it's fantastic. And we're thank in you, such Derek. an amazing country with so many amazing authors out yeah. there as yeah. well, aren't we? So, so spoiled. Incredible.